dislocations we know now experience, there also exists an extraordinary opportunity to form for the first time in history a truly global society carried by the principle of interdependence. And if we act wisely and with vision, I think we can look back to all this turmoil as the birth pangs. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations, a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. Some of them urged President Bill Clinton in 1997 to go to war with Iraq. 9-11 made their case for a new world order based on the predominance of American power and the superiority of American values. And after 1989, President Bush kept said, and it's a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order. And instead, it looks like we got a lot of disorder. And we still, when, and after 9-11, we've been more sensitive to the <laughs> All these new challenges are bringing together about the biggest restructuring we have ever seen, not just of the global economy, but of the global order as a whole. I suggest that the countries that are going to succeed are those that combine flexibility, free trade, open markets, with proper stewardship of the environment, and investment in education, infrastructure, and innovation. And the question for us is how we meet and master all these challenges to ensure that Britain enhances its competitiveness in the process and realize, realizes what I believe is our destiny of success in this new world order. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, a new world is emerging. It is a new world order with significantly different and radically new challenges for the future. You and I grew up in is gone. And maybe it's gone forever if we don't wake up now. McCain said last night, was anybody uh, stunned by, oh, I want to buy up all the bad mortgages so there would be no foreclosures. As, as outrageous as that was, bad news for you, gang, that's already in the bailout bill. Believe it or not, Paulson can do that. He doesn't have to even ask you anymore. There is a global meltdown coming. It is a global depression. And one world currency and one world financial system is the end game. China said last week they want one global currency. France said yesterday or the day before that they want one world order, a new world order, at the end of this event. Two nights ago, the government used $900 billion of your money to give loans to businesses and guarantee those loans. Did they even ask you? That's your money. Last night, for the first time, the interest rate was cut globally. In this new world, such dangerous currents have swept along faster than our efforts to contain them. And that is why we cannot afford to be divided. No one nation, no matter how large or powerful, can defeat such challenges alone. None of us can deny these threats or escape responsibility in meeting them. Law ever become a reality in America? Some fear any nuclear, biological, or chemical attack on U.S. territory might trigger just that. And as KSLA News 12 Jeff Farrell discovered, the clergy would help the government with potentially their biggest problem, us. Goodman. In a barely noticed development last week, the Army stationed an active unit inside the United States. The Infantry Division's 1st Brigade team is back from Iraq, now training for domestic operations under the control of U.S. Army North, the Army Service component of Northern Command. The unit will serve as an on-call federal response for large-scale emergencies and disasters. It's being called the Consequence Management Response Force, CCMRF, or CSMRF for short. 
It's the first time an active unit has been given a dedicated assignment to U.S. NORTHCOM, which was itself formed in October 2002 to, quote, provide command and control of Department of Defense homeland defense efforts. An initial news report in the Army Times newspaper last month noted, in addition to emergency response, the force, quote, may be called upon to help with civil unrest and crowd control. And to the large number of people arriving, you will experience a short delay. Many of us were told in private conversations that if we voted against this bill on Monday, that the sky would fall, the market would drop two or three thousand points the first day, another couple thousand the second day, and a few members were even told that there would be martial law in America if we voted no. That's what I call fear mongering. The PS3 frenzy turns violent in Southern California. The much-hyped PlayStation 3 video game console goes on sale at midnight tonight. And overnight, those long lines led to a fight at a local retailer. And now it's time. It's crunch time. And this is going to go on indefinitely for five or ten years. Oh, man. The crime is just going to explode. I know it is, but there's not much you can do about it. I mean, they laid this thing out. And they're doing what they want to do, and we have to stand by and hope to survive. Can you imagine Chicago and New York where there's total gun bans? What the crime? It's already, you know, 20 murders a week or something in Chicago. Can you imagine? I mean, thank God I'm at least in Texas where people try to steal, they get killed. Well, I think in all major cities it'll be a problem. Um, those people who live in major cities should be well armed and know how to use their weapons to defend their home. I don't think people should go walking the streets with them, but uh, you may have to do that in time, but uh, just to defend your family. And uh, those are things you just have to do. Well, we. I'm very glad to see that the humanitarian assistance is going well. Across this, across this country, this is the agenda I have set before my fellow prisoners, and the same standards of clarity and candor must now be applied to my opponent. We're gonna spread happiness, we're gonna spread freedom, Obama's gonna change it, Obama's gonna lead them, we're gonna change it, and rearrange it, we're gonna change the world. You are the instruments that God is going to use to bring about universal change. And that is why Barack has captured the youth.
And he has involved young people in a political process that they didn't care anything about. That's a sign. When the Messiah speaks, the youth will hear. And the Messiah is absolute. But the burdens of global citizenship continue to bind us together. A change of leadership in Washington will not lift this burden. In this new century, Americans and Europeans alike will be required to do more, not less. Partnership and cooperation among nations is not a choice. It is the only way, the one way, to protect our common security and advance our common humanity.